Today I'm with Frank Milot. How are you doing today, Frank? I'm, I'm doing okay. How about you? I'm doing very well. <laughs> We're in Ottawa, Ontario, and uh, Frank has been a long-time model railroader here. Um, he's been operating his layout with a very unique aspect over the last 40, 50 some years in, in different forms. It's a, a DC layout. DC, the power goes to the track and varies in voltage compared to DC. See, it stays the same mm -hmm. and you have a, a decoder that sets the, the... In this case, the power goes at, at the amount of voltage and amperage that we need right. with a thermostat, with a, a rheostat or, or, or a truck. Yeah. And uh, that's what makes move, to move forward or reverse by reversing polarity, uh, the locomotive, and uh, depending on the speed you want to go. So, <coughs> and so it's controlled it into a block. <coughs> so we're talking about direct current here. Yeah, that's yes. then by changing the direction of flow of the power uh, through the DC system, actually, you can go forward and reverse yeah, and, exactly. and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, because of that, and you're controlling your throttle directly to the engine, there, you have to look at your layout a little bit differently in terms of how you structure the wiring and so on. Oh yeah, well you have to have two wires for each block. Yes. And th those blocks are basically the same idea as districts in DCC. Right. Except there's more of them. In yeah. DCC you don't have as many districts, but these are district mm -hmm. or, or blocks. And it we and it's controlled by different uh, throttle, which are called cabs. Right. And uh, uh, so you you did select whatever block to whatever cab you want, and then the, the, the engineer has got the control on that section. Mm -hmm. Now the other thing I guess is uh, um, a situation when you're using DC is that you're talking about a number of different cabs. So what that means is that you can actually operate multiple trains in different parts of the layout but when you're in the same block you, not, not you're, the same block. you no. can't run a couple of trains there because the power is going to every engine and they will op operate together yeah especially uh, if you come in in reverse polarity then it, they'll go, they're going to be moving like this it's a bit of a dance <laughs> yeah. nine, my first train oh gosh my dad gave me a christmas lionel train which i still have yes it doesn't run anymore but that's where I really started. Yeah. When I stopped, I was a teenager. I said, you know, it was, to me it was a toy at, the, at that point because sure. I saw those HO brass locomotives at Hobby, Hobby House on the market. Hey, $35 for, for a, <laughs> a brass locomotive. Yes. I got some money. And I waited, and when I came back later on in life, after I was married in 67, mm -hmm. I went back and went into uh, HO. Right. And no regrets. Now, 1967 was quite an Ottawa, in Ottawa, it was quite a railroad community. Yes, we had, well, the OVR existed then. Which is the Ottawa Valley Associated yeah, Railroaders. That's right, yeah, which still exists yeah. after 50 some years. Yeah. And uh, you were a member of that group. I was and, a member, uh, I was chairman for, for a while, and we used to have clinics and all kinds of stuff that people would meet, and, mm -hmm. and we have some uh, layout visits, and uh, there's a whole bunch, of, a whole bunch of those guys are gone, though. Yes. It's unfortunate, but... But you're hanging in there. Well, I'm trying to. Yeah. W wish to live to 107. Well, it started as a point-to-point -point layout, right? In my mind, yes. And the first thing I built was a large yard. I always wanted a large yard. Yep. And that was built in 1972. Mm -hmm. And then actually, and then I only went up to about halfway. Right. <coughs> and I did the switching and all that. It was fun. Right. Then I opened up the other end, which is hull. So now I, I could move some trains from one town to the next town. From Ottawa to Hull. Yes. And that was your point-to-point -point railroad to start. to start with. And then it expanded. It went under and it went to Quillon, mm -hmm. which, and I said, hey, that's, this is the North Shore. You, Adrian French, uh, Fred Mills' uh, father-in-law, used to have the, 
the uh, North Shore mm -hmm. uh, from Ottawa to Waltham. Right. And I said, hey, that's a good idea. We had a cottage in Fraser. So I said, hey, I know the line. So I said, I'm going to use this side. And nobody had it because it, Ottawa Valley Associates Railroaders, everybody tried to get some railroads that would connect with the others. So this one was, and then it went up right up to, to, uh, to um, Waltham mm -hmm. uh, by going through Shawville. And at Waltham, of course, it never existed, but I've got a car ferry that goes to Pembroke. So I get all the traffic from the west coming there. <laughs> so I can, it goes through the layout and comes back and comes to Ottawa and goes out to Montreal. Or, and I've got another place in Hall, mm -hmm. uh, it goes on Tertiary Nation River. And in, in Waltham, of course, there's a car ferry. And then uh, I guess the concept of operations came along at some point. From and, the beginning. Yeah, right from the beginning. So um, what sort of uh, car forwarding system do you use here? Well, I use a card system. Uh, probably some of the guys have known Bob Craig. Yeah. And he was uh, my mentor, basically, because I used to, he used to say, hey, come and see us on Thursday night. Yeah. I went down there and I said, my God, I said, I've got the wrong idea. Mm -hmm. So this is where I really thought of doing operation, have a big yard, move lots of car, and have a card, card system, which I use mm -hmm. now for card in pocket, and make a train, and I've been using this for 40 some years. Right, and so your car cards, uh, basically, uh, how many moves do, does can a car have? Four. Four moves, yeah. okay, yeah. so you can go from point A to point B to C to D, and then back to A, or yeah. wherever you want it to go. And they have different destinations. They all, yeah. Some of them, most of them come back to Ottawa, or most of them come back to Waltham, mm -hmm. but some of them go back to the shipper. Right. You know, or through the, the car ferry goes, goes west, or goes to Montreal from, um, from Ottawa. What sort of method do you use to manage the, the trains through your layout? Well, the traffic, uh, because once the layout was finished, yeah. from, from point to point to Waltham, then I had the different industries named and so forth, and then I made some way bills from each, and then made, made the car card for each car. Then I had a train card. Mm -hmm. Then to control these train, I had a, a, a I made a, sch a schematic right. where the, the train number such and such would would leave, and they would meet at such spot with another train coming from the other end. And uh, I use the uh, um, the CTC system, right. which I developed after the. The whole thing was basically finished. Right. So, so it, you, it worked. The way I looked yeah. at it and uh, I planned, it worked. <laughs> and then and then you developed a dispatcher's panel, I guess, so that yeah. you could control the whole system from from yeah. from one spot. So yeah. when you, you have your operators, you have a dispatcher, yeah. you have a timetable, and you have your car carts. Yeah. So that gives you complete control, just like you would in, you know, say, a modern uh, DCC system. Oh, yeah. It runs the same Car sort of way. The same way. It's the same sort of thing. Um, can you show me your uh, dispatchers panel here? Because I know you were pointing a little bit uh, to the management system that you have already down here. This uh, sheet, the paper you were well, describing the, here. These are the different trains, like the train number 71, these Ottawa. Right. And goes to to Walton, but it, it stops in the hall, and this and they meet a different part, and, they, and each of those lines is a train. So this is a string diagram, in yeah, I think they call it. And, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, and where the uh, trains cross is actually where they meet. Yeah, and then you see that there's some delay. Yes. If some work to be done, or and some other, like I've got a, a way freight. Well, the way freight starts from there, and he, and he goes all the way down. Mm -hmm. You know, because he meets and he's got to do some work at, at different spots, like all Cuyo and Shawville. Right. And it, it keeps like this. And then you've got unit trains, or you've got transfer trains that go from Hall to Ottawa because there's sometimes too too much traffic. And this uh, band that you have... Is, Th this is where it is at this, this point. This is where exactly. So yeah. as you're moving through the schedule, you slide that along. Exactly. That's pretty neat. And, and then you've got this panel up here. And, and uh, let, let's describe this. Have a look at your Cuyo sit here. Now, well, Cuyo, this is the main line. Right. And this is the train 62, which is standing there. Right. Which is right here. It, that's a wave rate. You see, it's a peddler. Right. So, so it's gone here, and it's in Cuyo here. Okay. So this is Cuyo, if you look here. Yep. And then, and then later on, the train is going to leave Hall to go to Ottawa. But at this point, mm -hmm. number 70, is is here, right? Number t seventy in Shawville, so and it's, it's in Shawville, and it's going to overtake sixty-two, right? And go 
to, to Ottawa. Now, to you got a number of interesting um, switches and rheostats that are sitting under Quillon. Can you describe what they are? Uh, well, so, you know, just point to the top one. Okay. Well, this top one is to transfer. I'll put the light on so it give you some, an idea. See, now the dispatcher here has control on all the main line right. switches and all the all the all the all the uh, the blocks. Right. Now, if somebody's doing work in Quillon, which mm -hmm. is this block, right. if you flip this over, you're giving the main line to the Quillon control. Oh, I see. So he can do the switching. The same thing in, in Chauville. Right. If I do this, the same thing happens. Then I don't have any access to, to, to these. It doesn't happen. Okay, so that first one, uh, it, it directs the power two. either to the local or the mm -hmm. or the main line. And the two switches. Yeah. Now, what about below? What do okay. we got underneath that? This is the, the cab. It'll okay. go from... Cab one, two, three, four, depending of what, six, okay. up to up to ten, oh, up to nine. Okay. You've got ten. I I keep it. So you <laughs> you give it to the engineer, um, yeah. the power to their throttle, yeah. their cab. Let, let's see. I put the guy see on number three. Yeah. And then okay, I then I give him the power. Okay. So as that long gives as this is not power. up, it's not. And then when he's through, I can turn it off, and then. Because if I leave this like this and I go, I move it while it's on, yeah. it may move another train. Sure, I understand. <laughs> yeah. Now, what are the two to the left? One, there's one to the left and one to the right. What is that? These are the, the switch machines. Ah. See? Okay, so it's CTC controlled and the dispatcher yeah. can, from the tower, or you're also a tower operator controlling yeah. the turnouts. Yeah. So, um, and there's, this also, is, there's also a PBX system. Okay, what's that now? That's a telephone system. Okay. So we don't have to yell at each other. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> So it's a very quiet operation. <laughs> so you can ring the guy up. Yeah. You can tell him what, uh, whether he's got the um, control it's a, for it's that. It's 11th position. And uh, you, uh, you basically uh, manage the whole thing the, right yeah. from uh, one station. Exactly, yeah. And for the operator, they can just concentrate on their uh, car cards and their uh, yeah. and their train to do the work they have to do. If we were like nine guys with uh, operating plus uh, one dispatcher and a superintendent, that's 11 people. We keep them busy, all of them, mm -hmm. and we'll move about 18 trains in one evening, in yes. two hours. Yeah. And that's about 250 cars or so. Wow. Which is, you know, yeah. I mean, it never existed between Ottawa and Walton. No. You maybe had one train a day. <laughs> well, you make a very interesting point. I mean, uh, when people try to operate any model railroad, to make it interesting, you're always putting more trains into a time period than uh, prototypically would be there. But and, it, and that's what operates it with fast time. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, it, at some instance, we had to stop the clock. <laughs> right. So you also have a, uh, a fast uh, clock system? Or, or well, I use the five minutes, six minutes, you see. Okay. Uh, the the, the old-fashioned, uh, you just take the minute uh, okay. and hand and you put it the hour <clears throat> and you uh, mix them up. Right. So, uh, every six minutes is an hour. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> it's cheap. <laughs> yeah, it works. It works. Wonderful. But we had to stop, like I said, because sometimes it was going too fast. Mm -hmm. So well, what era is your railroad? What? Uh, 1965. You're fussy. more of a first generation diesel guy. Yeah, I like that because there's less trouble on the track. The, the steam, steam engine, they're very uh, sensitive. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they'll derail for nothing. Yeah. But they're nice to look. And I can't have large locomotives that I like on this layout because it's a branch line, so I can't go up with a, a Selkirk or, or, or one of those big out, you know, but yeah. I get them out just for the fun of it.